and is a God who does not change. Everything on this planet Earth changes. The climate changes, season changes, people change, government change, everyone changes. But God does not change. That is the attributes of God. He is the same God yesterday, today and forever. He remains the same. Hallelujah. And today the Lord wants each one of us that we need to walk uh, by faith. Hallelujah. The testing of your faith produces endurance. Hallelujah. Your time will come when your faith will be tested. Whether you will stand with God or whether you will uh, leave God and forsake Him. My brother and sister in Christ, today let us quickly turn our Bibles to the book of Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 1. Let's read uh, chapter 11 verse 1 in the book of Hebrews. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Faith is what you don't see, Amen. but you need to believe. The problem with many people, because they cannot see faith, they don't believe. They say, oh, how this is going to happen? When it is going to happen? How? Who will do for me? But the Bible says that we need to believe in God. If you want to do business with other people, what you need? You need money, right? Yes or no? But to do business with God, you need faith. Amen. That's why wherever you see in the Bible, that whether Jesus healed the sick or performed miracle, only one question he asked. Where is your faith? And the disciples in such situation, they did not have much faith. They told Jesus to increase their faith. Amen. If we look into the gospel of Luke chapter 17 and verse 15, let's see what the word of God says. 17 verse 5. The and the apostles, Lord, increase our faith. Jesus Christ was preaching to them. You see clearly, but here they did not have faith. So they said, Increase our faith that we may believe. Hallelujah. That's what is very much important. And that's where 2 Corinthians Paul said in 5 or 7 that we walk by faith and not by right. sight. We don't look at situation and walk. We walk by faith, believing in what God says. And what the Bible says, God is ready to do it. Amen. That's where the Bible is a book of faith. When you read the Bible, it increases your faith, it boosts up your faith. Even your faith will be down. You see clearly, it will boost up. That's what you know in Romans chapter 17. You know what he says, 10 verse 17. If you see in the book of Romans 10, 17, he says, Faith come by hearing and listening the word of God. He says, so faith come by hearing and hearing the word of God. When you hear the word of God, it develops faith inside you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When you read the word of God, it will increase your faith in you because God will only speak uh, through his word. He will not speak outside his word. Anything that comes outside the word of God does not belong to God. It belongs to the devil. And God does not operate with fear. Amen. And that's where the devil will always try to put fear in your heart. So that you don't walk in faith. My brother and sister in Christ. And thus way it is very much important uh, to see. There were ten lepers who came to Jesus Christ. And ten of them received the healing. But only one came and gave glory to Jesus Christ. And the Bible says that he was a Samaritan. And Jesus asked. We are the nine people. They all went away. Because they did not come for Jesus. They came for the miracle because they had leprosy. But this one person came back and gave glory to God. Amen. If you look into, you see clearly, he looks from 17 to 17. Let's see in Luke. Luke, the gospel of Luke chapter 17 from 17 to 19. Let's read it once again. Then Jesus answered and said, Where are there not ten cleansed, but where are, but where are the nine? Next verse. So, and there was not found anyone who returned. To give glory to God, except this foreigner. Next verse, see clearly what Jesus says. And he said to him, Arise, go your way. Your faith has made you well. Amen. 
he was not even a christian he was not even a follower of jesus that's why he say you are a foreigner he was not in covenant but uh, he had faith in believing that jesus can heal him and jesus healed him and here jesus is telling your faith has made you well my brother and sister in christ thus way to walk with god you need faith abraham was a man of faith the bible says that abraham believed in god and he was considered righteous sometimes in a walk with god we have faith as a mustard seed okay and sometimes we have faith as a mountain but sometimes we do not even have faith as a mustard seed that is a walk of faith you know waver suddenly it is increasing one day next day it is decreasing it happened it is a common thing in human being in everyone sometimes you have faith you will tell oh don't worry god will do this for you but when it comes to your own situation you don't have even faith in believing that's what always jesus asks a question where is your faith amen you see clearly peter he called when was peter was walking on the water the bible clearly says peter was walking on water like walking on the ground suddenly they came doubt is this really jesus or this really a ghost but as long as he thought that it was jesus he was walking on water like as if walking on yeah. ground but when he doubt he started to sing so immediately jesus said why did you doubt you see fear came into peter and that's what my brother and sister in christ that fear is there in every person's life there is fear for everything there is fear for visa when you get married there is fear you lose your job there is fear if something happens in your life you fear if you get sickness there is fear if you go to the doctor and the doctor gives you a report there is fear what is going to happen everywhere there is fear 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 my brother and sister in christ but they forget that god is there with them my brother and sister in christ and that's where the greatest weapon in man or the greatest weapon in the devil to destroy man is to put fear in man Amen. and when you have fear you cannot progress you need to believe in god Amen. that's what hebrew chapter 11 verse 6 says clearly hebrew chapter 11 and verse 6 let's see what the word of god says but without faith it is impossible to please him for he who comes to god must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him he says without faith you cannot please god that means you must have faith to please god if you do not have faith you cannot please god because you must believe that's why in mark 11 verse 24 he says whatever you ask in prayer you must believe it that you have received it amen oh unless i receive it then i will believe many people they are like thomas jesus christ spoke four times about his death and his resurrection to the disciples and when jesus christ rose from the dead one of the disciples went and told thomas you know the master has risen from the dead and he appeared to me he said no 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 no, no. i don't believe in what you say he said unless i put my finger in his wounds then only i will believe it now this thomas in the year 50 he came to india in kerala the same tom is one of the disciples of jesus christ and that's how christianity came into india in 50 ad that is the history of thomas they was killed he was martyred over there in india so this tom is telling no 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 unless i put like many people did oh unless i see then only i will believe but when jesus appeared to him he said blessed are those in the gospel of john chapter 20 he says clearly 30 or 31 he says clearly blessed are those who not seen but believed blessed are those not seen but believed why he said that to thomas because thomas heard the words of jesus and truly jesus did many other signs from the life. and then clearly he said that blessed are those who not seen but believed why it says that clearly 
because you know what happened thomas because you have seen me you have believed blessed are those who not seen and believe we are the ones we didn't see jesus we never lived with jesus but we believe in what the bible says today if i ask you how oh, jesus died you will say oh he said in the bible i ask did you see jesus you say no but you are believing that is called faith amen hallelujah my brother and sister in christ in you we see he said you have not seen but believe but blessed are those though they did not see but they believed in what i said and today my brother and sister in christ we are like those people though we did not live during the time of jesus christ but we believe in what the bible says we believe and we don't doubt his crucifixion no his resurrection no his second coming my brother and sister in christ because in the last day they will be mockers they will mock and say where is the promise of the fathers everything has moved until late today they said oh jesus is coming jesus is coming jesus is coming but jesus did not come till now they will be mockers but we don't have to doubt about that my brother and sister in christ because if it's written in the bible it will surely come that's what jesus christ said heaven and earth may pass away but my word shall not pass Amen. hallelujah Amen. everything that whatever jesus predicted it came to pass my brother and sister in christ hallelujah Amen. and that's where you need to increase your faith i said uh, you may have faith as a mountain but times you may not even have faith as a mustard seed there was a prophet during the time of second kings we know that during the time of first kings he was the prophet elijah we know that prophet elijah in the first king chapter 18 he had an encounter with the false prophets of baal and astrog 400 false prophets of baal and 450 prophets of astrog 850 prophets and these false prophets they sat at the table of jezebel the most powerful woman during her time you know she controlled this 850 prophets but because elijah was a man of faith he was a man of faith i can say but i what i told you sometimes the faith can be high and thing and here what he says clearly that he commanded and he says you are among two opinions if jehovah is god worship him and what is the sign that god is there the god that answers by fire is god Amen. he put an open challenge you know they say oh we also believe in god oh we also god that's what many people today oh all god the same what they say all god the same so the same thing they also but elijah said if let us test who is god hallelujah in first king chapter 18 he says let us test who is god because they also were worshiping gods they also were worshiping gods So Elijah said, "Okay, why are you in two opinions? Let us know who is real God. The God who answers by fire is God." And they said, "Oh, okay, we accept the challenge." And immediately they erected an altar. They put wood. They put everything for a sacrifice because fire has to come and burn the wood. Everything they did, they started to call upon their God. from morning till evening they were calling 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 nothing happened so finally elijah made a mockery of the god he says is your god sleeping yeah is your god sleeping why because the god of the bible does not sleep no slumber amen hallelujah bible says in psalm 121 is the god who neither slumbers Sleep. no sleeps so he says is your god sleeping okay if your god is sleeping wake him up but for morning the bible says for morning to evening they were trying the level best because if is really god today i am asking you you must answer you today this is the challenge i am throwing openly to everyone if is god he must answer you Amen. he must visit you in a vision in a dream and say lord if you are really god speak to me show yourself to me Amen. god will show yourself to you Amen. so immediately it is now the time of the prophet elijah You see, he said, "Known that Elijah mocked them and said, 'Cry loud, for he is a god. Either he is meditating, or he is busy, or he is on a journey, or perhaps he is sleeping and must be awakened.' You see, and then clearly we know next thing. It is the chance of the prophet Elijah. Hallelujah! They did lot of stuff. See, they cried out, they cut themselves, 
as is custom with knives and lances until blood gust thinking that at least that god needs blood sacrifice so if we give blood sacrifice like human you are telling something the devil always wants human sacrifice god doesn't want amen if god wanted human sacrifice he would have allowed abraham to kill isaac on the altar amen. that's why when cain killed abel he was angry amen he says where is your brother he says i am my brother's keeper he says but the blood of your brother is crying out to me amen. so god hates murder when you kill someone you have violated the command of god that's what i told you before also you see the bible is a bible of love jesus christ portrayed love not to kill one another and call things stuff which is happening at the present world so they cut is now the time for elijah what he did he put water in the trance and he put everything when he called the god came down by fire hallelujah you see clearly god answered by fire and burnt the offerings and clearly what happened all the people proclaimed and said the god of elijah is god Amen. why because he manifested himself by fire a brother and sister in kerala hallelujah you see and it came to pass at the end of the offering of the evening sacrifice that elijah the prophet came near and said lord god of abraham isaac and israel let it know this day that you are god in israel and that i am your servant and that i have done all these things Amen. at your word hallelujah and next verse see what he says clearly and immediately you are my lord that these people may know that you are the lord god and that you have turned their hearts back to you again and immediately fire came and burned the offering the the hallelujah then the fire of the lord fell and consumed the burnt sacrifice and the wood and the stones and the dust and licked up the water that was in the tent he put even water you know when you put water on the wood it is very hard for the wood to catch fire yes or no okay because if we want to put out the fire we we put it out with water right that's what we do we want to put out the fire what we do we put water we use water but yeah you put water so that you know how can it catch fire but god you know what happened fire fell and immediately when all the people saw it they fell on their faces and they said the lord god is god the lord is there you see his faith his faith was like mountain Amen. But in the 19th chapter, one servant went and ran to Jezebel and said, "For tonight, you know, dinner, 8:50, false prophecy will not see anymore." She said, "Why? What happened? Are ah, they in a holiday?" He said, "No, no, they are not in a holiday. There is a prophet called Elijah. He killed the 850. That means 850 is minus on your table." She was angry. in the 18th verse one says clearly in the 19th verse we see clearly that she was so angry with who with the prophet elijah you know that's what happened i'm telling you see 18th verse his faith was like how like a mountain one man challenging 850 people hallelujah but in the 19th verse was one and two clearly we see what happened one servant went and told this jezebel this queen see Sent a message and says, "I have told Jezebel all that Elijah has done and how he has executed all the who went and told the queen, the king. He said, 'I am witness what happened, and see now what she is telling.' The next verse. Then Jezebel sent a messenger to Elisha, Elijah, saying, 'Go, let the God do to me. See the God do to me and more also. If I do not make your life as the life of one of them by tomorrow or by this time.'" i will assassinate you i will uh, kill you hallelujah and then he saw this he rose and ran for his life and went to bersheba which belongs to juda and left his servant there iran now the same person in the 18th chapter killed 850 false prophet and here he is running away from one woman okay now if god has given victory is 850 men who were strong what is the woman for him but here he ran away where is his faith he is hiding in a cave not while he is hiding he is telling god better you kill me this is too much for me because this woman is back of me that's what happened many times when too much of problem is in your life too much of a oh lord i cannot take any more tonight better i die 
I cannot take too much. This tension is too much. This problem is too much. This worry is too much. Better for me to die and take me that to your place. Many of us say those, right? We ask God, you know, it's too much for me, Lord. I live too much. Better this night you take me away to you. I cannot take it anymore. So what happened? We see clearly. And I have been very jealous for the Lord God of hosts because the children of Israel have forsaken a covenant, tore down your altars and killed your prophet with the sword. I alone are left and they seek to take my life. And then he's telling better for me to die. What is the use of this life? What is the use of this life? Because problem over problem. In my life, problem over problem in my life. Every way you see, there is an obstacle. Every way you see, there is problem. One problem after the other. One problem after the other. How long will I go through this suffering? How long will I go through this way? Better for me to die. You see, that's what he said. In the next verse, clearly we see. You see, I am alone left and they seek to take my life. But where is his faith? That's what many... People like us, my brother and sister in Christ, our faith is like that. We have faith as a mountain, but here we do not even have faith as a mustard seed. The same person who ran away, hallelujah, for his life. Thus way, our faith sometimes is high, sometimes it is low. And thus way, God has given each one of us a measure of faith. And the, in the nine gifts of the Holy Spirit, one gift is the the gift of faith. Hallelujah! Because without faith, God cannot do. That's why the Bible says two must agree. God may have faith in doing a miracle in your life. But if you don't believe, how can it happen? You see clearly, my brother and sister in Christ. So you have to come into agreement with God. Hallelujah! And that's what we see. That's what happened even in the lives of Lazarus. Mary, Martha, Lazarus, wherever Jesus Christ went, to, he performed miracles, he rose the dead. He did great miracles. They saw everything. But when it came to their brother Lazarus, they are not able to believe. They are complaining. Jesus is telling, you know, your brother will rise. Oh, we know. In the second coming, the dead will rise. We know, they are telling. We know that. But they saw the miracles. They saw the healing. They saw the deliverance. They saw Jesus raising the dead. They saw Jesus raising the daughter of Jairus. Amen. They saw Jesus raising the widow of nine sons. They saw the miracles they did, but when it came to the brother, they do not have faith. Hallelujah! And here they are complaining. Who's complaining? Both the sisters. They're telling Jesus, when your brother you know, died, you didn't come here. Yeah? Every time you came to my house, we showed you very good hospitality. We cooked the best of food. You know, we gave everything what you want. But when we are calling you, you didn't come because Jesus Christ came late. Hallelujah! You see clearly, he said, then Mary came where Jesus was and saw him. She fell at his feet saying to him, Lord, if you have been, my brother would have not died. If you are there here, you would have not died. If you are there here, you have not died. But that is the faith. You see, but they did not know that the person who holds life and death is there with them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My brother and sister in Christ, sometimes we look at situation and we cry. Oh, my situation is dead now. Nothing is going to happen. My brother, my sister, you do not know my life. Everything is dead. Everything is closed. Every door is closed. Oh, you do not know my problem. What do you know? If you are in my shoes, well, you will understand my problem. You see, many people will say that. What do you know what I am going through? You do not know. If you are in my position, you know what I am going through. You see clearly. And they are telling, Lord, if you have been here, my brother was not die. You see? That is their faith. But Jesus Christ said something. In 11 verse 25, He said, I am the resurrection and I am the life. Amen. That whoever believes in me, though he die, he shall Amen. live. Hallelujah. Your brother is dead. Don't worry. Hallelujah. But I have the power to raise your brother dead. Amen. He says, do you believe? Then he says, oh, yes, we believe. Because now they must have recollected. Oh, yes, cruelly. Jesus raised up Jairus' daughter. No, so if he can do it, they must have. They you see, the faith had to match the faith of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. 
I'm telling you today, Jesus has the faith, he can do miracle in a life. But if you do not have faith, Jesus cannot work with a person who has fear. Mm-hmm. Unless you take away that fear and believe, mm-hmm. this belongs to me, yes, I take it by force. Hallelujah. Bible says, from the day of John the Baptist, the kingdom of God suffers violence, but the violence shall take it by force. force. Matthew 11, 12. This job belongs to me. I will be in this country. No one can take me. There was a sister who used to do evangelism. She was illegal. You know what happened? One day the police caught her in East Ham. She was from Ghana. And they said, what is the status and all? They inquired. They said, illegal. They said, now we are going to remove you and take you to the detention center and deport you. You know what she said? God brought me into this country. And this United Kingdom belongs to God. Without the permission of God, you cannot remove me. I am not coming. When she said that words, the power went. I don't know what power went to them. Those police fellows, they left her hand and they ran away. <laughs> it is true, my sister. I am telling you, yeah. it is true. It really happened. Yeah, oh, faith or sir. She said, no. God did not tell me to go back to Ghana. And I am not going. I am telling you, oh, faith was so strong. I am telling you today. God gave her a British passport. God gave her a house. A uh, husband is a driver. Yeah. Yeah. We, I used to see him in 238. He used to drive. Emmanuel. Emmanuel. By faith. You know what they did? They had nothing. But one thing they did. They stood, in the, they stood on the high road and they used to give tracts and say that Jesus is God. Yeah. They were so faithful. I am telling you. God gave everything. Yeah. They said, no. God brought me into this country. It belongs to him. Not to you. I am not going. That was the faith. I was there when it happened. I was thinking how this lady saw she talking like that. But today, blessed couple, because it is the faith okay. in which when you stand for God, 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 God will stand. stand. He said, if you walk one mile, I'm ready to walk another mile. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But if you deny, like how Peter denied, Amen. Peter challenged Jesus. Master, even now you are ready to die, I'm going to die. He said, before the rooster can crow. But then too he said, even if I die, I will not deny you. He said those words. Not even an hour, thrice the rooster crow can finish. <laughs> then Jesus looked at him. He started to remember the words of Jesus and he wept bitterly. My brother and sister in Christ. And that's why we need to walk by faith, believing in God. For he has promised a place called heaven. And that's what Paul, you know, even he was going through suffering. He said the suffering of this present world is nothing compared to the glory that shall be revealed. In Romans chapter 8, verse 18, he said. Why he said that, you know? Because in Philippines, he said 320, for our citizenship is in heaven. The life which you and I, we are living today, my brother and sister. It is a temporary life. Amen. One day, everything will go. Look at the people who died in the coronavirus. They never thought they were going to die. They had money. They had money, they had everything, but they could not save their lives. Hallelujah. You see clearly, my brother and sister in Christ, yeah, I consider the suffering of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be Hallelujah. revealed to us. Because in Philippians 3.20, he says, I finish, our citizenship is in heaven. This home is not a home. This is a temporary home. One day you have to leave everything. Because God said, uh, you have come from the dust. You will return back to the dust. So when you die, you know, you will take nothing. You may be the most richest person in this world. Hallelujah. You may have properties, you may have everything. But when you die, you have to leave. You will be buried in a six feet grave. And after some times, you will also be forgotten. <laughs> you know, clearly. I am telling you today. For our citizenship is heaven for which we also eagerly wait. For the Savior, for the Lord Jesus Christ. That's why they were able to take faith. They were to take faith. They were able. Why? Because of their faith. They continued in their faith. They never gave up. They were beaten up. They were martyred. They were killed. They were hung. They were burnt alive. Look at the, the disciples, how they died. If you want to know the story, look by a book. It's called the Fox Book of Martyrs. How they were killed. Everything is given. You will cry if you read that book. You'll say, I am nothing in front of them. It's true, my brother and sister in Christ. That's why we need to have faith in God. Amen. Believe in God. Hallelujah. Do not doubt his existence. Oh, I didn't see God. I, how can I believe in him? God is there because you and I, we are created in the image of God. 
We are formed in the womb of a mother. God said to Jeremiah, before you are formed in the womb of your mother, I have known you, I have called you.